All right. Well, hello and welcome back to this episode of the Law of Relevancy podcast. My name is Cord Zoen and I'm the CEO of Bake More Pies, a Tampa-based marketing and advertising firm. On this show, we talk about things that are very relevant, things that are happening right now. And so we invite experts like Patrick Harrison, the Chief Marketing Officer of Visit Tampa Bay, to the table. It's Patrick, very nice to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I, I hope I can uh, impart some, some knowledge or at least something new to everybody. Absolutely. So we're very interested in hearing what you have to say about destination marketing. Patrick, you don't sound like you're from the Tampa Bay area. Where are you actually from? You know, I used to joke with people that I'm from Brandon and I have a slight speech <laughs> impediment. Um, but no, I mean, I, I moved here from, I was born and raised in, in, uh, in England. And then I traveled to a bunch of different countries, ended up in college here in Florida in the 80s, moved back for a while froze my, my, uh, to death in, in, in London and uh, got back here. And, uh, you know, marketing, advertising, PR has always been my thing. And if you're in Florida and you're doing those things, then some way, shape or form, you end up working in the tourism business. So, you know, this, this is kind of how I ended up here. Well, that's very interesting. I would say that you probably have a very unique perspective on the tourism industry, being from a country like England, where the travel policies are very different than what we have here in America, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, any, any marketer or anybody in any, any business, um, it's their experiences that shape the type of personality they are, right? And what they see and what they do. And, you know, I, I was working in, in tourism in the UK um, back in the 90s um, when everything was going really well over there. Then I was here working with for agencies in Tampa and in St. Pete, working on a whole bunch of different tourism uh, entities, you know, everything from, from airports to museums, to whole counties, to the whole thing. And I think all of it just gives you a diff different perspective. I was living in Australia when Paul Hogan was doing the, the shrimp on the barbie ads. So, you know, I mean, I, kind of, that kind of dates me, but you know, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of it from a lot of different angles. Well, that couldn't have, I mean, that was an incredibly effective campaign when he yeah, was he doing that. He asked for money. He did that for free. So, you know, you don't get very many celebrities who do that stuff for free anymore. Um, every time we've approached one, the fees are a little bit higher than we can afford to pay. Yeah, well, royalties and trademarks and things like that, that whole marketplace has drastically changed since the internet as well. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about um, destination marketing and your approach at Visit Tampa Bay. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I could go back to a little bit just as, as an overview of, of who and what we are and what we, we do. I think there's been a, a very much a seismic shift in this company um, in the last 10 years. I think very much in, in the past, uh, like a lot of destination marketing organizations or CVBs as they were then, they could be somewhat self-serving and they were really out marketing themselves. And I think what we clicked upon when we rebranded back in uh, 2014 was that that's not what we do. We're supposed to be producing economic development and economic opportunity for our community, for the betterment of our residents and our citizens. And the way we do that is through tourism. So it's really a switch of a mindset. You know, it's not just heads in beds, even though that's what really supports us financially and actually gives us our money to go out and market. But really, it's, it's, the, it's the whole idea of if we work together, we can allow independent restaurateurs to do better and therefore open up another restaurant. Or we can allow cool bars, we can enable cool bars to make more money and therefore hire more staff and therefore open a bigger bar or a museum to be able to bring in a bigger touring collection of pieces. So really, that's at the heart of what we do. It's not, here's a hotel, here's a this. And then, you know, going back to nobody comes to, to Tampa Bay to visit us, right? They come to visit all of our partners that are all in the community. So that's really the basis of what we do. But for, for, for Visit Tampa Bay, we're a little different. I mean, we, we, Florida is, you know, blue skies, sunshine, and beaches, right? We don't have a beach. The Hillsborough County beaches are not world-renowned. We're also the only major county in Florida that doesn't have well, it doesn't have either a beach or Mickey Mouse. See where Orlando and Kissimmee, where they lose the beaches, they get that. So really the way we market has to be different. We can't do just pictures of beautiful beaches. I think the Bush Gardens people will be really upset with you right now. Bush Gardens people are wonderful partners of ours. No, how? In the, 
But you know, um, they are, actually they come into part of what we do. So because we don't have one of these individual things, we sell as being Florida's most. We have Florida's most roller coasters, Bush Gardens. So you right. add in the stuff of the others. We have, uh, you know, we, we go really by Florida's most culture, Florida's most adventure, because yeah, outside of St. Augustine, nobody has any history in Florida. If it's more than 30 years old, it's probably been demolished and turned into a parking lot. You know, we're the only ones that have these things. Right. So really, that's how we market really more. Um, you know, we talk about breweries and restaurants and culture and history and cigar rolling and trying to make this authentic, real kind of like a Denver of the South, a Brooklyn of the South, uh, you know, something like Portland of the South, you know, something that's a bit more <clears throat> hip and cool and authentic. And that's what I think we've tried to do to, to stand out from the others. Well, I think, I think you've been very effective at it. Even if you look at your branding itself, uh, the new logo is phenomenal. I think it really captures the essence of what it is like to be in the Tampa Bay area. Um, even over your right shoulder on your pop-up stand there with the uh, Tampa Theater, that has been around for a very long time. And there's a lot of culture embodied in that structure itself. Well, that's just it. I mean, we have these beautiful pieces, you know, these parts that make up, these individual pieces that make up a much greater whole. Right? And you can come and you can see and you can experience. And Tampa Theater is one of the oldest theaters in the country. You know, one of the first to have air conditioning. It still has the great big you know, organ in there. It's phenomenal. You go into down to Ybor City, you go into some of these little cigar shops, or you, you're just walking down 7th Avenue. That's not something you see every day in Florida. And I think that's um, correct. I think that's actually, I mean, our icon, our logo does tie directly into that. I mean, obviously, there's an homage there to pirates with what looks like a skull and crossbones, but it's, it's keys and a keyhole. And the right. whole idea is, is unlocking opportunity, is unlocking adventure. I mean, that's what we're trying to get people to do. So, you know, if you want a old school vacation where you go sit on the beach, and then that's, we're not that, and we won't pretend to be that. What we want to be is exactly who we are. Right. Well, obviously, there's a, that's a different CVB over on the uh, other side of the bay there. But I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for you guys to work together because when the Super Bowl's in town, they benefit. When they have big, go ahead. Yeah, you know we do, uh, especially internationally. Um, the two of us visit St. Pete Clearwater and visit Tampa Bay. Work very closely with the airport, the Tampa International Airport, and bringing in U.S. service. You know the the, the uh, Lufthansa flights and. And the Edelweiss flights and all of that was all of us working together and going there and banging on the doors and bringing it. But we do work really in collaboration. You know, I think what they have is a different thing to what we have, but I think it does. I mean, it's a huge benefit to us that they have some of the best beaches in the world. And some oh, of the yeah. In the world are 30 minutes from downtown Tampa. I mean, come on, who wouldn't benefit from that? Just as I'm sure they benefit from, you know, us having Bush Gardens and some of the others. So it's a really good mix. And it did show, and you know, when we hosted the Super Bowl, what was that now? It's uh, almost, well, it's two months ago. It seems like a year ago already. It's, it's kind of flying by. But we together made a, a conscious decision that in the Super Bowl media center, rather than just having a little 10 by 10 booth and, you know, just hanging out there, that we would put together the biggest thing the NFL has ever had from a media center perspective. It was 60 by 60 with food from Ybor City and with food from, from St. Pete and Clearwater, with entertainment, with a whole stage set up. And it was co-branded between the two of us and, and the host committee of the Super Bowl, just because we knew this was like the coming out party. You know, the Super Bowl is going to be the coming out party. And it, we, we work with them on, on a bunch of but there. I, I can't speak highly enough for them. Actually, I used to work with them back when we did a uh, we did a great April Fool's joke about seven years ago where we introduced an animal that was part manatee, part dolphin, and we unleashed it on the world. And uh, I don't, had a lot of fun with that. That's great. Well, well speaking of, food. yeah, definitely will. That, that's, that's phenomenal. Um, I love uh, campaigns like that that can really kind of become buzzworthy. Um, well, speaking of, uh, you mentioned coming out party, right? So it right now, it appears like we're coming out of this challenge and this adversity that we faced over the last year or so. Um, how is Tampa Bay and Visit Tampa Bay adjusting? Um, how did you adjust? And then what are we doing now to be one of the most competitive destinations in, in the world? 
Well, what we did initially at the time, you know, and I, I think you have a fight or flight mentality, right? When something like this, this scale happens, we took the opportunity to go from being a selling organization to being a leading organization. We looked at the 750 odd partners that we had um, and determined our job was to keep them in business. Our job was to keep them informed, make sure they got the relevant information about what was going on with, I mean, you must remember all of the different, you know, rumors and myths and does COVID do that? And can this happen? And, you know, it was really trying to lead our partners through that, working with, you know, Tampa General, working with others. But then it was stepping back and saying, okay, what are we going to do? What's our plan going to be? Um, we very quickly transitioned from what was generally, I and mean, we used to run two big uh, advertising campaigns a year domestically, uh, a December through May campaign that was really the Northeast, Midwest, and then a summer campaign, which was really more in-state and a little bit of drive. Um, the market changed, right? On, on March 15th, the market changed from a demographic where we were looking at, you know, a, woman or a family aged in their late 30s to early 40s, but you know, all the different demos that go into it, to who's prepared to step outside of the front door. That became it, you know, we started looking at travel and tenders. Um, so we started looking with our, with our different vendors and our different partners that we work with on a media uh, scale, started looking for key indicators, you know, can we find credit card details on who's bought luggage or on who, you know, those who are showing an affinity for travel which of course has expanded over the over the months. So that by the sure. time we got to the fourth quarter of last year, we had a huge pool we could drag through. We also started measuring where people were coming and where they were traveling when they were in the destination. And a lot of the points of interest marketing, which works great for Super Bowl, because we could show that people really did spread all over town and it wasn't just into specific areas. And we started, I mean, we got rid of all of our traditional out of home, all of our tradition, I mean, all of those things had to go away. And we right. transitioned probably almost entirely into a, you know, a digital, uh, digital marketing on every different level we could find, whether it was from connected TV, we now do a lot of connected TV, but we do a lot of stuff that goes into the, the markets that show in the that affinity to travel. So, you know, if people are watching a cooking show, if they're watching a travel show, they're watching it on Hulu. They will see our ad. Not if you're in Hillsborough County, but anywhere else. That is That's great. Now, we love OTT marketing. Uh, we think it's amazing with how effective it can be because, I mean, these days, it's one of the only types of uh, video marketing that you can even have that is not skippable. Right. Even. Exactly. I, l I love that. And we've gone over the last few years from you know, gas station TV into this, this stuff that is not only can they now get the message, but now we can track them. I mean, it's great that we right. can now track them through the, the device. Um, even if it's not watching on the TV, we can, you know, you can tell where the, 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 what the IP address is. It, this, it's the in-depth way that we can target people now um, is, is amazing compared to, you know, what it used to be 10, 20, 30 years ago when, when, the, when there was a lot more guesswork in. And now with these digital campaigns, if one's working better than others, you're getting a higher click-through rate, you're getting a higher conversion rate. The, the ability to to transition and, and on a dime is 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 really uh, it makes us look good, right? Yeah, it, it does. Well, one of the um, we run a few campaigns for some extremely large organizations in the OTT realm, and and one of the strategies I'll just share a couple of the strategies we're doing. One of the strategies we do is we'll actually when we go to production to produce these commercials, we'll actually plan on A B testing the creative. And so what we do is, is we'll go ahead and record slight variations and then we'll test it with pre-roll or OTT. And then you can very quickly traffic the one that's performing best and you end up getting about three to 4% better results, you know, from commercial to commercial. So it's amazing the addressability nature. There are some new challenges coming down the pike with the uh, more security features. Um, we've seen it happen in Europe first and then California and now Apple itself is releasing iOS 14, which is going to lock down some of the uh, ability for some of these media partners to do targeting based off of things like credit card transactions and things like that. Yeah, we're, I mean, this is obviously a, a constantly shifting marketplace. You know, some of the folks that we worked with five years ago, you know, we no longer work with now because they weren't able to move with the times and the changes. Um, 
and then new ones come in. I mean, it's the great thing about technology. I mean, I, if there was one piece of advice I would give to any marketing people out there is always be looking for the next thing. Correct. So look with what you have in five years, you're going to be obsolete. Um, you know, going through some of the, the privacy issues actually worked out for a benefit for us in Europe when GDPR and the rest of it first came in. Because it gave me a chance to clean up the mess we had. It gave me an opportunity to tear up a lot of things and then start from scratch, which is a tough thing to get, you know, your, your, uh, your CRM team to agree to or, or, you know, your database folks. But sometimes it's a clean break is an advantage. Similarly, you know, looking back, you know, I can say there's a, so many negative things about what happened in the last 12 months with COVID-19, obviously with the deaths and the sickness and, and the loss of jobs. I mean, we laid off some people back in, you know, in, in, sure. March, in, in June. But it also gave an opportunity to step back and say, stop doing what you've been doing. You know, this, that's just because something has been working in the past. Is it really working in the right way? Is it working enough? Is this a time to just to just stop getting rid of the stuff that you, you don't really need. You know, just concentrate on on the pieces that, that really, really convert the business. And those that don't at this stage, for example, with us, we run a lot of conversion campaigns through OTAs, you know, Expedia and so on. Right. And a lot of the filling the funnel, we just stopped. Now we're moving back into filling up some of that, you know, top funnel with the brand awareness again. But at the time it was six months. Our partners needed revenue. They needed to right. So it's ha and I'll give you just, Eric, uh, I just pulled this up today. The, the Expedia campaign that we've been running since October has brought in over a quarter of a million room nights, over $38 million in revenue to our hotels that they wouldn't have otherwise had. And if that's managed to keep some doors open and has managed to keep some people in their jobs, then I, then I you know, that, that makes me happy. It means we're actually doing what we've set out to do. I think that's amazing how you look at what you're doing with Visit Tampa Bay. It's not just about heads in beds. It's about the economic impact that you're making um, in the community. And I, th I think everybody that lives here really appreciates that you're looking at the overall economic impact. Yeah, we, we did um, some resident surveys. We hired an independent research firm. Uh, this was pre-COVID. We haven't done the testing again you know, since we've started to reopen the doors. But we were genuinely pleased with the response that we got. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, a lot more people knew what we did than, than we thought would. Because by, by definition, we're not allowed to advertise in Hillsborough County and we don't advertise our name. So, you know, unless you have an interest in, in marketing or the tourism industry, you probably would have no idea who we are. But I think the fact that people did, and yeah, they complained about parking and traffic and, uh, you tell me one city anywhere in the world, even a, a you know a one horse town, people are probably still complaining about the, the traffic and, and parking. So, you know, I think people were happy because they see that the efforts of not just ourselves, but the city and the county and the downtown partnership or the West Shore Alliance or all of these groups that we have these beautiful downtown parks, you know, we wouldn't have those. You know, we were able to have all, I mean, the, the river walk was really a game changer. I mean, really bring that just brought to life downtown, which certainly was not the place that you would want to be, but now you do. And I think that right. has really enabled us to, to show results. You know, when people go to a music festival or a film festival and, and the crowds are there and you see people are there from all over the country, it, 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 it makes you feel like you're actually achieving something. Yeah. And I think, I think even for the state of Florida, those venues are unique. You know, to be able to have access, to be able to put on those kinds of uh, of events, mm -hmm. to be able to have like a river front, a, a river walk like that. I think it goes back to again, we're a different um, city to to most of to the rest of the state. You know, and I'm, that's not a knock on anybody else. You know, Miami has South Beach and, and all those festivals down there, and they're phenomenal. Um, we're not Miami. You know, Orlando has you know a lot of the attractions. We're not that. But I think that we have been able to show that we are, um, that we've grown up, you know, yep. we know we're a, a, like a, a tier two city. We are now one that people want to live in. People sure. are moving to in large numbers. We're, we're beginning to run, and we work with the economic development folks on a, another a separate campaign called Make It Tampa Bay as opposed to Visit Tampa Bay. Very similar looking stuff, but it's really more about talent attraction. And right. Bringing, uh, 
and getting businesses to relocate here because nobody moves their business or moves to a city without going there first. Oh, right. absolutely. And spending a lot of time. Um, right. I think, I think that that's uh, really important that you point out the USP, the unique selling proposition for our Tampa Bay area is extremely strong. Are you ready to call us a tier one destination yet? Uh, maybe tier one A. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you think about, and you know, this has really shown again, and I don't want to keep harping on, on, on get, get back to you know, normal life, but it has shown that those who were in, say, New York or San Francisco or Chicago and some of these areas where they were paying huge rents and living in smaller apartments, this, we've, said, we've become a very attractive alternative. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of people moving around. And I think we have, I think we're well situated. If we can just get some of the highways finished and get some of the transportation yeah. done, I think we'll be ideally located for a lot of the future success. Patrick, I'm going to stop you just for a second. So uh, there was something happening with your microphone during half of that oh. answer. So I'm going to repeat my question and then I'll have the guy edit it in post. Whatever that, whatever you just did, did you do touch anything around your computer? Yeah, I moved a piece of paper. Whatever. So that made a huge loud noise on the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask my question again. This, I'm going to tee it up. The, well, I'll tee it up and I'm sure you'll <laughs> do fine. All right. So Patrick, I, I really think that, you know, you diving into the USP, the unique selling proposition of why Tampa is better is, uh, and, and your understanding of it, I, th I think it's extremely important for what you're doing there at the, as the CMO. Uh, so uh, here's the late, so I guess this is my next question. Are you ready to call us a, a top rate or first tier destination yet? Uh, um, 1A, right? 1A. <laughs> You know, we're not, we're not, um, we're not New York, Expect from a tourism perspective, you know, we're not New York or, or Vegas uh, yet, but from a talent acquisition and, and city perspective, you know, we've seen over the last 12 months what has happened with people locked down in small apartments in expensive city. They are rethinking that way of life. Is that somewhere you, you really want to be? You know, I mean, you look at we were fortunate, Florida was fortunate. I mean, just because what we went through, at least we could get outside. We could get fresh air, we could get sunshine. You know, um, over the winter, can you imagine being stuck in a 700 square foot apartment in, in New York on the 52nd floor and, uh, and still trying to work in that environment? So I think we're, be we're becoming more attractive by the day. I think we're gonna see a lot of tourists come down here this summer who would not normally come in the summer. You know, Tampa is not normally a, a summer tourist destination because the sun shines everywhere in the summer, right? Right. And other places have beaches. But I think there's such a pent up demand for people to get out and get some fresh air and feel the, the grass in their toes. And, and uh, I, I think we're going to do fairly well. Well, I can tell you as someone who's just gone through a, a home purchase, uh, the real estate market is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't find a place. Plenty of people want to buy mine, but I can't find uh, another, another one. So I think we're going to yeah. may have to stay stay in the same place for a while. Yeah, maybe. Well, Patrick, I really appreciate you joining us today. And I, I think that your advice to, to us and to other marketers and communications professionals has been really, really valuable. Where can people follow you more and some of your thought leadership? Um, well, they can follow Visit Tampa Bay on pretty much every social platform or myself on uh, on LinkedIn, probably not on Facebook because I talk too much about my soccer team you know, and I'll bore everybody. Um, but, you know, but we also, we, we do have uh, Visit Tampa Bay. We do speak at a lot of different um, uh, opportunities, both in town and without. It's a great video running right now. We, we've talked to US Travel about uh, hosting a Super Bowl during a pandemic, which is, uh, you know, which uh, going back to what I said earlier, was a great coming out for us. Um, so that was a phenomenal kind of success, a phenomenal oh. success. I mean, not only from the, uh, I mean, obviously we, everybody here in Tampa loves the outcome, but, but the, uh, a phenomenal success in terms of it was attended. There were, uh, from all the numbers, it looks like it, we came out unscathed. Uh, yeah, I think there was, I think the, the number was, and I may be off by one or two, but I think there was only like 70, seven zero cases of, of yeah. COVID that came about. Um, you know, the, the, I think it was, 
it was such a huge boon to the city. If, if, if there was ever a time to host the Super Bowl, this was it, even without the big crowds and even with the home team there. So a lot of people can't visit or, or want to come in. But to, so the, it meant the community could get out into the parks. The community could get out and see the, uh, you know, the NFL experience and it was made free for this year. So they could all see it and be a, and get to be a part of it and feel more comfortable being out in, right. in public, which therefore means they're going to be more uh, open to restaurants. They're going to be more open to going on vacation. Yeah. And I think that's it. Sometimes you need, you know, that, that kickstart. And I think that, and now we had what WrestleMania last weekend, uh, yeah, just finished again, two nights, 25,000 a night, huge success, massive, even with the rain that came down. I think there's going to be a lot more of these events coming up, and I think I think you could you, you could see the happiness on people's faces. Yeah. Those things, and I, I think we've all become. I think by marketers and by definition, we've become quite cynical, and I think pe the the people uh, have become quite cynical over many years about what you know they're being how they're being sold to or or how they're being marketed, sure. to, or just life in general, you know, whether it be politics or whatever. And I think just to actually see joy on people's faces you know that that's what we do that's what tourism is right it's we're, we're selling happiness we're selling absolutely joy. so so it was it was great i enjoyed, i actually got to go first time i've ever been to a super bowl so i was happy that's that's awesome we certainly appreciate everything that you guys are doing over there at uh visit tampa bay and uh and as a member of the Tampa Bay community, I really appreciate, you know, your thought leadership. And thank you again for joining us on the Law of Relevancy podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on. All righty. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and follow the Law of Relevancy podcast.